Well, there's your shy. Here we all are. <laughs> Let me sip my coffee. Good morning, you shy. You there? Can you hear me? Good morning. Good to see you. I hope you both had a good weekend. Good. Well, quite all right is better than not good. <laughs> That's good, Dublin. I was up and down. I felt I was getting better. And I woke up this morning and I don't feel much better. But it's going to be up and down. I, I, I just have to uh, live with it, which I'm quite prepared to do. And what to do, as long as I have enough strength to do my work. That's, that's my main concern. No, I, I it's, uh, it's a very complicated problem. Part of the thing, part of the thing that happened was I lost so much blood during the operation that it, uh, during the amputation that um, one of my kidneys got injured. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is hopefully that is healing itself. It, it's only an acute injury. It's not severe. And that means it's the kind of injury that can, not always does, but can, and sometimes does, just heal. I, I, I think it is. Please, God, thank you, Hashem. No, I sleep pretty, pretty okay. Except I get up every, every 10 minutes to go to the toilet. So my whole system is just thrown off, if you know what I mean. I, I hate to talk about this because it sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm, I'm only telling you what's going on. My entire system is just thrown off, and uh, I've still got the gout condition that caused and, and necessitated the amputation and might require another one. I still have the spinal stenosis that makes it impossible for me to walk. You know? And now on top of that, I have a, uh, an injured kidney. And on top of that, I'm 82 years old. <laughs> now, it's not as grim as I'm, I'm making it out to sound. It, it's not as grim. I, I just... I don't feel well. And, uh, hmm, I'm having a nice cup of green tea, and that seems to be helping. It is quite a bit, and it is. And I, I want to feel like I did before all this, and I don't. You know, you, I don't think you ever really heard me complain. I kept saying, if this is all there is, I'm happy for it, to being old. I can't say that anymore. But my head is clear. My thoughts are clear. I still look forward to the future. Yeah, thank you, David. It, it, it worried me at first when I wasn't. When I was just feeling so bad, I, I was thinking, oh God, this is the way it's just going to be. That's not so far the case. God bless you, you shy. Ah, uh, that's both, and especially my strength come back. God, thank God, I, you know, I was a, I was a strong man, <clears throat> and I think I still am. 
I just have to regain that strength. And there are a lot of things going on that are, are draining it. But uh, I feel confident that with Hashem's help, your support and my inner strength and determination, uh, it'll be okay again. <clears throat> oh, thank you for listening. I, I really, I, I really don't like being this honest about it because I don't want everyone to get worried and I'm complaining and I just think it's better that you do know what the level of severity is rather than not and rather than thinking oh he's okay he's getting better I, you know that's not so I'm I'm going through a recovery there are times when it feels like that recovery is being very successful and there are times when it doesn't um, the times that it feels like it's being successful are increasing that's the truth I'm being very truthful with you thank you yes you shy yes now I don't want you to think I'm on my last legs God forbid I am not I, I'm being very honest I'm not I'm just not well but it's not, please, Hashem, thank you, Jesus. It is not the beginning of the end. It's just complications. I mean, look, I had fairly major surgery, two of them, one right after the other. And I had to be in, in hospital for two and a half months. It was serious. They, they weren't sure I was going to live. I'll be honest with you. The infection was spreading so violently that they weren't sure I was going to live, and they thought perhaps they'd have to take off the whole damn foot. So thank God that didn't happen. As one of the nurses said to me, the doctor saved your life, and they did. And I'm enormously grateful to them and for the care I've gotten. <clears throat> now the problem is to make certain that that infection does not erupt again. You know? And we're being very careful about that. And that all the other side implications are, are calming down. I feel, isn't that hot? I know. Thank you. God will, I do, I do, I do. Every day I feel stronger and more alert and vibrant than the day before. It's just more difficult for me to get started, I'll be honest with you. No, no, you're, you're right to hear it. And God, thank you, Hashem. I, I think I am strong. Thank you, God. You know... No, no credit to me, but I think I am strong, and I think that uh, that that will pull me through. I'm never going to be the way I was before all this. Of course not. I mean, it was a major event. And another thing, people who are having so much more problems than I am, God, God bless them, and God help them, and God look over them that it feels childish for me to complain. I mean, I'm able, I mean, God bless my, my three neighbors and because they're here constantly, they're doing everything for me, everything. Without them, this would not be possible. Strictly, literally. Um, I can get around on my own but cleaning the house doing the laundry making the bed getting my mail doing the shopping taking care of the dogs I can't do that anymore at least not now but I'm you know I'm able to get around I, 
And I thank God every every day for it. So that that's in response to your uh, saying, though, that I sound strong. I, I am. Thank God, I'm a strong man. I don't mean muscular and all that. I mean I'm. I've been strong all my life. Well, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I think the last time before this I was in the hospital was when I was 10 years old and I had my appendix taken out. And I thank God for the way I've been eating all my life. I think that has a lot to do with it. And it's prepared me for being on very, very special diets. On top of all the other things that I've not been eating and won't eat, there are all kinds of other things I'm not permitted to eat. And that's okay. I, I'm accustomed to that. That doesn't bother me. I've, um, I've grown accustomed to that. I, th I hope so. Baruch Hashem David. I think so. I think so. And, uh, and I'm just glad that I've always been so careful about my diet, that I've always been a lacto-oval vegetarian. Yes, now and then I've, I've eaten meat. I cannot eat red meat anymore, ever again, ever. A little bit of chicken every now and then. But for the most part, I am on a very enjoyable 100% vegetarian diet. I, it's almost vegan. And I love it. I love the food I make. So I don't feel deprived at all. Jesus, thank God for green tea. I'm, I'm starting to feel even better. One of the worst things is I'm lo losing the use of my hand. The what's called toothy are popping up under my fingers. They usually confine themselves to the joints of the toes where they are now. But uh, it's uh, spread to my, my right and left hand. The index fingers of both my right and left hand are getting almost useless. And being that I've been so clumsy all of my life, I mean, really clumsy. This only increases the clumsiness. I do not cook on the stove anymore. I think that's far too dangerous for me to do. Cooking with fire. I cook very successfully. Everything I eat in the microwave, believe it or not. And I have a, a, a very diet and delicious diet. So that, that's why I'm taking this time to, uh, to let you know. I just thank God I'm alive. I have no complaints. I don't wish to God I weren't or any such thing. I'm th I thank God I'm alive. I'm able to work. I'm not as able to spend as much time on the computer as I used to be. I still wake up at 3.30 in the morning, do this podcast, and then after that, do as much work on the computer as I can, and then I go back to bed. Yes, oh, the, thank God for all that. And the book is coming out. You name me one other 82-year-old poet who has probably his most important book being published in his 82nd year. <laughs> I'm, I will not give up. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. I'm very grateful to my publishers. They've, they put a lot into this fourth book. Just by its having been published, and getting the reviews it's gotten, I think it's an enormous success. I, no poetry book is a financial success. I, 
that's going to be a New York Times bestseller. I mean, that, that doesn't happen with poetry. There was a time when it did, when I was a young man, when I was in my 20s and 30s, poets were like rock stars, serious poets, serious, real poets. People would hold their breath until a new book came out by Eliot or Ezra Pound or one of those guys. They were just like, honest to God, they were like rock stars. That's just not so anymore. And I think self-publishing has a lot to do with that. I thank God for my wonderful house. It's, it's laid out in just such a way that even in a wheelchair, because I'm confined to the wheelchair, I get around. I really do, with practically no problem at all. I thank God for my dogs and cats who have been just such a wonderful, wonderful source of support and love and caring. Uh, I look forward to every night when we all get into bed and hunker down to rest and watch uh, CNN. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to the two of you. Uh, words just don't come to express how grateful I feel. And to Jane and David and Tony, the nurses that were coming out here were just amazed at the kind of support I was getting, I am getting. Either one of you got anything you wanted to say or ask about? Thank you, Duggan. This will be our, our podcast for the morning. I, th I think, do you agree? I think it's a good idea to podcast it. That's okay. Well, either one of you got anything you wanted to? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. YouTube it for sure. And just a kind of final word for the listening audience. Please don't hear this as me giving my, my final words. I'm not. God has not taken me this far to abandon me so quickly. I know that. And as I tell everyone to do, I bless God at the very moment that he's afflicting me as he is. He's only doing what he does. God bless you, David, and you mine, and you also, Yeshai. And I, you, my friend, really, both of you, friends, not just students, but beloved friends. All right, I think, I think we can stop for this morning. I'll take care of some computer things and then lie down again. Jane is coming today. Tony is coming today. I've got a lot to look forward to. I'm going to rest up before they get here. Let's end as I do every morning with the Kaddish in memory of our beloved friend. I'm brother Leonard Cohen. Yiskadavi, Yiskadash me abo, Bomo di Vroch, you say, the Amuk Machuse, the Chayachon of Yomechon of Chaye de Chalbes Israel, Bagala of Isman Korizim Ruamein, Yesh me abo Mavarach, the Lomo Mel Maya, Yisparach, the Yiskabach, the Yispaav, the Somam, the Yisnasavius Hadar, the Yisalavi Salau. Shmei de Kutcha Brechu, Leila Mincha Birchasa de Shirasa de Shasa, Venechemas Sadran Bamavim Ruamein, Yehe Shlomo Rabba Minshamaya, 
וחיינו עלינו ויעקב ישראל דמרו אמן. עושה שלום דמרו אמן. הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ויעקב ישראל דמרו אמן. That's for you, beloved Eliezer. All right, God bless you both. We'll meet tomorrow morning. Until then, Yivarechecha Adonai V'yishmerecha.